welcome to the latest instalment of Bet Fred's Road to Cheltenham. Delighted to say, after what has been a very busy weekend, we have got Irish broadcaster Tom Lee alongside us and our mainstay Joe Ross as well. We're going to reflect on what happened in Ireland and on these shows as well and look ahead to a couple of the big races at Cheltenham as well. Of course, look into the weekend as well because we've got Super Saturday at Newby. Plenty more festival clues upcoming as well. Right now, we are non and no bet on all races at the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, so but before we get stuck in to Cheltenham, Joel, you joined us last week on the show and you're rather critical of one of Tom's friends here, Richard Patrick and his, and his uh, jockey ship. <laughs> no, I wasn't critical. <laughs> Listen, don't you dare play it back. No, generally, there's, there's two jocks that I, I have had bad times with. Not in person, not in, I can't believe it. Not, <laughs> not in real life, but in, you know, like Robbie Power and Richard Patrick. When I back them, they never win for me. That's the only reason why. And everyone's got a couple of jockeys on the list that you go, I just can't have them. I've got about 20. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so speaking loud and direct, amplified from the very bottom of your pocket. Yeah, jo absolutely. Speaking right from there. Joel, the hitman Ross. Yeah. The, the goose tree gladiator that. stands up and puts the boot into a man who... Robbie Power, Richard Patrick, whichever one you want to choose on any given day. Who's closest? <laughs> Let's not forget, just before you get on the, the, the bandwagon of trouncing jockeys, these are boys who, and this, this analogy is trotted out time and time again, but it's so true. Whilst you, what's the biggest, Joel, let's be honest, what's the biggest peril in your day job? Probably a paper cut from your third packet of crust, custard creams as you sit in your armchair, oh, I'm waxing, getting, yeah, waxing yeah. lyrical, whereas these lads are being chased around at 35 miles an hour by an ambulance. Yeah. Easy to criticise. It is. I tell you what, strap him on the back of a thoroughbred and see what happens. <laughs> anyway, right, let's get stuck into the action because it was a really busy weekend uh, over in Ireland. Let's have a look at the market movers then of what to move the most this weekend. Obviously, we start with Vauban uh, in the Triumph Hurdle. Very impressive into 9-4 to four from 6-1 to one now for the Juvenile Division. Joint favourite with Pied Piper, who we saw last week was one of the main market movers. Lahon Press, I know Tom's going to wax lyrical about him shortly, into 4-1 to one for the Turners. Ahoy Senor as well, made all in the tower and he's back on track. He is 5-1 to one, uh, for the festival, and obviously Chase the Brown Advisory, however you want to call it, RSA still, uh, to me. And then the big mover, conflating the Irish Gold Cup, we'll talk about him shortly, 10-1 to one from 66-1. to one. Uh, But first of all, there's only one place to start. She's a superstar, she's a record breaker, she's the reigning champion hurdler, she's a three-time Irish champion hurdler, she's 14 from 14. Joel, I'm going to keep going on and on and on, waxing lyrical, honeysuckle, is she going to turn up in five weeks? Canter oh. to the start, canter back, pick oh, up another champion. Unbelievable. Hurdle. We just talk about it. It's, it probably works out about 10 grand a hurdle, I think it is. <laughs> uh, she's unbelievable. I said to Tom in the office earlier on, we're more on speaking terms. And, and I said, to, I can't believe that Honeysuckle hasn't earned a million quid yet. It's like 840 grand or something like that. Uh, un, un, unbelievable. 14 from 40. There's nothing else to say. If um, Did you see the people come back in the parade ring afterwards in the winner's mm. enclosure? It was so nice just to be back there. Were you, were you there, Tom? I was not there. I was sitting watching on the television, lapping it up, thinking, really, she's now the public horse. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah. single one who flocks around the parade ring, three, four, five deep, everybody just wants to catch a glimpse of her. It's, it's dawn run-esque now. And yeah. the longer this run goes on, and God willing, she turns up and dazzles the crowds and wilds everybody in Cheltenham, it's just going to go on and on and on because she has everything. And of course, massive part of that, her trainer, Henry de Bromhead, but also, of course, the girl on board, who is just elite, yeah, yeah. wonderful, Perfect, perfect mentality for the big occasion. Nothing seems to rattle Rachel Blackmore. She goes in there, she does her job, goes about it neatly, diligently, just doesn't let anything affect her. So those three in, in tandem, and the silks of Kenny Alexander, I tell you what, we're going to see some special days yet from her. Because yeah, we, put, we put up Rachel last year as the champion jockey uh, as yeah. well, and I think I said, and I don't think it's a secret, it was, I think she's the best jockey riding um, in Ireland at that point, and probably in, uh, in Britain as well. At that point last year, I think she's, she's phenomenal. She's got it all as well. Not Richard Patrick, no? Uh, Richard Patrick is a close second. <laughs> Robbie Power, a close third. <laughs> right, well, she goes... And Stokel, a close fourth. <laughs> she goes to the to start. She comes back, she wins. Quickly, in about 10 seconds, give me something to chase her home. Um, daylight. Daylight. Daylight <laughs> second. <laughs> look, look, what, 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 what would you say? What, what, well, you said Epitaph last yeah, week. Yeah, I, I put that as my charity about last, uh, last week. Um, and you said to me, someone's going to finish second. I probably would do, but it's... it's it's one, to, it's one to say, but it's one to watch. It's one for the Ackers, um, and it's, it's just one to just go, oh, what a beautiful horse. Tom? 
I agree with everything that's just been said. Moving swiftly on. Daylight into second. Right, let's talk about the uh, two-mile champion chase series then because it looks like Shishkin versus an Ergerman, although now Shaq and Pessoir has put his hat into the ring, as I mentioned. Now, he is into 9-2 to two after a third Dublin chase. You're not overly convinced, though, are you? Pipe down, will you? Come <laughs> on! Are you really tr honestly trying to suggest to me that the Shaq and Pessoir, who had his, had his bottom smacked in, in the Tingle Creek, who doesn't like crossing the Irish Sea, who delivers on the big day in Ireland, but he's an old man now. He's nearly as old as Joel Ross. He's 10 years of age, equine pensioner. He's got the pipe, the slippers, the walking stick, the full hit. OK, it's all right beating an under, un under par green team. Back in second yesterday was Dunvegan, for heaven's sake, rated 156. On what planet are you if you seriously suggest that anybody in Seven Barrows base and Nicky Henderson sat watching that and didn't halfway through think, nothing to see here, lads, is the cricket on the other channel. We'll flick it over because this... It's not, he's not involved. He's not on a par with his stablemate at Nergamine. And at any rate, based on the Clarence House and what we saw just a couple of weeks ago in Ascot, he's not even in the same room as those two. Shishkin well, all the way. Well, Willie Mullins did say afterwards that he put Shaq and Pessoa in a different lead to Nergamine. I'm not sure if that was spur of the moment, living in the moment of the Dublin Festival. You can care, is it still a match, Shishkin versus Nergamine? Yeah, 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 Shishkin first, Nergamine second. Um, Shaq and Pessoa might, might run a distant third. Uh, it's the matchup that everybody wants, and I've been watching so many uh, YouTube videos of people s working out how um, Shiskin can get beat. Oh, I wonder where that uh, was going then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, we, how we can get uh, Shiskin beat and whatever, and, uh, and I, I, I think it's I think it's a pretty straightforward race. They're all going to be like this. All was it 27, 28 races or whatever it is. All going to be as simple as this. I think Shiskin wins, uh, Anoga men second, uh, and then uh, distance to the third. Yeah. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. Honey Shish Circle Shishkin, it's the bank of double then. Are you seriously telling me? I know it's your job to try and stimulate opinion, but on what grounds are you constructing any realistic argument based on what you saw in Dublin that Shaq and Pussoir is going to turn up with a spring in his step at, step at the age of 10 and give us, give us all a whack on the nose by beating Shishkin? I'm just staring at these odds on favourites and rather worried about well, them. Well, we, no, we stared at them yesterday. I mean, we were texting yesterday and I was like, which one of these gets beat? And it was like, in, 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 mm. in. And and in the, the park. Yeah, 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 in the bumper. <laughs> Willie's in the bumper. Yes. It didn't come true for yes. once. Right, quickly wrap up through the rest of the year, uh, Dublin Racing Festival. Gold Cup conflated, threw his hat into the ring. Is he a major player? Is he a major player? He's an each-way player. And, and the market is relevant to that because, of course, what is he into? 10 to 1, something in the region of that kind of price. Non-runner, no bet. Um, Likeable performance. Um, ultimately, if you backed him on Saturday, which nobody did, you have Davy Russell to thank because he's yeah. the one who kicked on and, and, and actually secured that race from a long way out whilst the others dawdled or cut one another's throats. Uh, I, listen, I, I think there's still a way to go to be talking about him in the same breath. Bear in mind, uh, the, his penultimate run, he went off 9-4 to four for a novice handicap chase when he won and the owners had to be convinced that he even had a small each way squeak in Saturday's race. Another jump again to Cheltenham. Did you just affirm Apple Tard and Galvin's position? Uh, well, well, well I, th I think looking at it, I think uh, Frodo set it up anyway. Uh, it was like a pacemaker in there. Uh, we had it on in the pub with the sound turned down. It was like, what is that? Three, uh, you know, three out. It was like, what is that? That's Davy Russell, a jockey I do like, by the way. So if you see Davy, tell him I do like him. Um, <laughs> it's fantastic. But I think Jack Kennedy said that um, it's a more talented horse than Galvin, which, you know, uh, it was your charity bet last week. Ah, uh, um, spare of the moment. It's in the heat of the moment. Yeah, the tree, I think somebody it? said it lugs right and jumps left, and it's a difficult ride, but Davey's your man for that. Um, and then on the radio the, earlier this morning, uh, rumours were to go to the Ryanair and then to the um, Bowl. Uh, Bowl at Aintree. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, ma makes sense for me. And, and I think, of course, if Jack Kennedy is available, Jack Kennedy will ride it, but, of course, he's got Galvin in there as well. So Davey for Galvin. I don't mind. Galvin wins for me. Uh, right, I know you're a big fan of Vauban and the Triumph because he sauntered clear and that gives that nice rematch with Pied Piper again. Yeah, uh, yeah, because it was. Um, I watched it again last night and it was beaten, what, half a length at uh, Punchestown. Uh, shorter room, um, made a little mess of the last. Pied Piper, like we said last week, uh, visually, to the eye, looked fantastic. But was it a 50 to 1 shot back in second or whatever? And mm. I keep coming back to what has he actually beaten? And people were tweeting, including Brendan Powell, saying, uh, Is your winner the triumph? Uh, I thought yesterday um, it was really good for um, for Vauban. Um, and it, it was just nice to see him did it really well. Yeah, one of six Willie's Mullins's six grade ones over the weekend. Yes, indeed. Vauban, let's not forget that on New Year's Eve, he was sent off 4 to 9 to beat Pied Piper. And all right, the result might or might not have been different. All that, that interference that John mentioned all the way down the home straight was reported after the race. Off the back of that, don't forget what Pied Piper's already achieved in Cheltenham. I mean, that was an electric performance last week. And of course, he's got the advantage of already having demonstrated he handles Cheltenham, which is a very big ask. These are babies, they're four-year-olds, for heaven's sake. I mean, they're literally at the very start of their careers. 
and he's been there, done, been there and done it at Cheltenham. That's a big tick in the right box for Pied Piper. Another one for William Mullins was the Blue Lord in the Irish Shark Club beating Riviera de Tell 11 to 4, 7 to 2 respectively for the English version. Both major players? Mm, Blue Lord, certainly. Yeah. Ooh, I agree. Yeah? 100% agree, Blue Lord. Yeah, people yeah. crabbing him. Well, they're wrong. Oh. No, 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 I think... I think Me, think, mainly. Yeah, 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 yeah. People are grabbing him. Well, who, who is? No, I think, I think Blue Lord, when we're looking at the, uh, all the races throughout Cheltenham Week, I think Blue Lord's got to be up there as like a third or fourth best bet. Right, so William Williams took the arc all the novice chase and then he took the staying novice chase the next day on Galloping Deschamps, which I'm no French expert, but I suppose he's Galloping champion or he's not far off that already, is he? Well, what he is is a horse who's lit up Leopardstown twice, once at Christmas time and now stepped up here where he's dazzling. I mean, he stands often. And he's really good to watch. And yet, which way do they go with him? Will they go two and a half miles in the Turner? Will they go three miles three in the miles. Brown Advisory? Uh, there's so much to like. Big, robust, free-flowing sort. And yet, it's going to get an awful lot harder because depending which way they go, go to shorter race, who's going to be there lying in wait? Could it be the likes of Bob Ollinger? Could it be the horse I love, L'Empresse? It's going to be some minute, horse right? race. Some horse you race. You say three miles. Yeah, I just think three miles. I mean, listening to the jockey and the trainer yesterday, they're both in different... Um, <laughs> one was saying you get two and a half, one was saying three miles. Uh, at the same time, being interviewed at the same time, so nobody knows. <laughs> uh, like you say, you don't want to bump into Bob Ollinger, but uh, uh, at the same time, I think that the class of this horse, just a bit, again, visually, just looks beautiful. Yeah, he does. Well, he said he's out of his comfort zone, so be interested to see which way they go. And the, the last one we're going to talk for the Dublin Racing Festival, I know Tom's opinion on this, but I'll come to you first, Joel. It was Sir Gerhard, 72 for the Supreme now. Could he be the fifth horse in the last, what, nine years to do the double and go on and win the Supreme? Well, I've been with Sir Gerhard right from the start, and um, yesterday I thought it was the poorest performance out of fantastic performances. However, it was still a brilliant performance because the time was brilliant, and he smashed, he, he jumped like a novice. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if we're sending him to, uh, to get, go and um, polish up the jumping skills or whatever, um, but I, I, just, I just thought yesterday, the time was great, but it looked very novelty for me. And that was your point, wasn't it? His mistakes. I'd say if they, if they let him off 10 minutes in front of the others, yeah, yeah. that lad's no chance against Constitution Hill, John Bond, nah. whatever turns up on the day. If he reproduces yeah. those mistakes, those novelty mistakes, really sketchy novice. mistakes, one or two of those early on, he's on the back foot, bye-bye, yeah, yeah. because they will go, think about it, the Cheltenham roar, the pent-up excitement, especially this year when yeah. there's been no crowd in Cheltenham for two years, they're going to go wild well, when well, that well, tape goes up yeah, for the opener. Yeah. Whereupon... They're going to be on their toes. They're going to go off like scalded cats. Imagine if Sir Gerhard, if you're backing him at 7-2, to 4-1, to one, whatever he might be, he comes into the first, he makes a mistake. He comes into the race, gone. Yeah, yeah. See you later, lads. You can't, you can't do that. I was texting you yesterday because I'd done the distances and I was like over four lengths or whatever. And I, at halfway, I thought, well, I don't think he's even winning this. But kept going and going and going. Very That's the engine. Style. So maybe think of the battle. Yeah, yeah, the, maybe. yeah. The engine's mm. great, but 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 just needs to maybe go Henry at night and just get some uh, <laughs> get some jumping. Right. Well, don't forget, he's going to be up potentially against John <clears throat> Bon, who's been learning the ropes. Newbury. Then he went to Haydock, had to knuckle down and battle and show a bit of attitude. Constitution Hill, who at Sandown in the Grade One looked like he just joined in two furlongs out. I mean, there is some stiff examination, and if he turns up there, even with those credentials and even with those connections. If he makes mistakes early doors, good yeah. luck. Can I ask? I know you want to move on, but can I ask Tom about John Bond? Yeah. Well, what do what, what do you think? What do you think of John? Bond? Ask me. No, no, no. Okay. I know what you think, and I don't agree with. Uh. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what, what do you think of John Bond? <laughs> I like him very much. No, I'm. I'm, I'm not keen. I'm a, no, I just saw the opinion when you, you know, just uh, triggered my imagination now. Where you said about the crowds being back there and how he sweats up anyway, mm. and all these crowds going nuts. I think that could really, you know, yeah, the boil them over, maybe. and yeah. it's such a short price like that. Yeah, but you get a uh, you can you can get a sort of an oily, free sweating sort who can perform on the big stage. Just ask this. Hi, oh, she's <laughs> with us. Yeah, uh, moving swiftly on then. Right, Sandown. Just going back to Supreme. Shall we have one more the nice performance? He might go and try and win again before he goes. He's twenty five to the Supreme for Gary Moore. But on Sandown, the star of the show, and I'm going to let you take the stage here because I know you really like Lahon Press. You put him up, and he dazzled in the City Isles. Two stars of the show. Shall we have one more? His rider, Josh Moore, back oh, in yeah. the big time after a very, very serious injury. That would look really very concerning for quite a long time. And yet, hard as nails, Josh Moore, back in the saddle, winning. What a man. Uh, Four-legged equivalent, this long presse. I think what he's done now in his short career already over fences. Exeter, Ascot, Cheltenham, grade two in the dipper. Then he turns up on the big stage with an informed Charlie Deutsch, informed Venetia Williams, picked Dohi, officially rated a pound superior. But, I mean, he just bulldozed his way around there. And he's not a big, clumsy brute of a type like, for example... Me. I, I wonder about, well, you, but I also <laughs> wonder about the likes of Ahoy Senor, 
who does make mistakes. This guy is just razor sharp, he's electric, he's stylish, he's slick, he's quick over his obstacles, but he's bold, he's aggressive, he's free flowing, he's front running. And I just think the sky's the limit for him. Obviously it's gonna get harder again, but he's done it at the right track. He's done it on a variety of tracks. She's teed him up very nicely by running him on tracks with stiff uphill finishes. Everything seems to be right for Lorne Peresse to go on to the Turner and run a big race because you see the way that the stable have just improved through the season. Deutsch, I think, is just riding better and yeah. better and better. Like right. him very much. Fearless. Before I come to Joel, then, you mentioned a Hoy Senor. He was also in action. Very different type. Very different type. Uh, high quality horse. Excellent trainer. Grand National winning stable. And yet, he, he has got a mistake in him. And that's what would scare me because we've seen how good he is on a going day at Newbury and yet he's still learning the ropes. And again, how hard and how fast they go around Cheltenham if they would take him there. Obviously a variety of choices of races and a variety of choices of trips for him potentially. And yet, I just wonder about him because we'd have mistaken him. He only beat three horses on Saturday. And don't forget, clever, shrewd, sh sharp, smart Emmett Mullins, six days after Noble Yates was a terrible disappointment in Ireland, registered clinically abnormal by the vet post race in Nace. And yet six days later, there he is, shrewd trainer, seeing the opportunity, coming over and winning nine grand, Joel, yeah. for finishing second in the Talton. That's clever placing that in defeat. But what does it say about the form? Because yeah. it doesn't excite me as an animal that we want to be getting stuck into, anti-post, even non-runner, no bet. I just don't trust him fully yet. He could go on to be a superstar, but I, I think he's raw. Raw well, is Tom, the word. Am I going down the wrong... Look at those two, um, Laurent Presse and Ahoy Senor. Could you compare them to, like, Demon and Quarter Star? Because Quarter Star... <laughs> Frankly, no. No, 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 no but, but I mean, as far as you know, the makeup of the horse. It's a bit like saying, can you compare you and me to Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt? Well, I, I know. Think, <laughs> so which one are you? I, I, I think, uh, well, Tom Cruise, obviously. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but the, the way in which, now listen, we're getting carried away there, unless you've had a lengthy weekend in the pub and haven't yet sobered up. Uh, I mean, it's just, just, just as far as, I know the miles off that sort of quality, but as far as... I know like, what you mean, the style, the way, the, the, way yeah, yeah. the style of the home press with the, the big tank of... Yeah, the big, the big tank, and then you've got quarter star that, you know, had ruin one, smash one, a bit like, uh, was it Mr. Mr. Coffee at the weekend? Did you yeah, see that? You, <laughs> you bulldoze the ditch. Um, do you like the home press? Uh, yeah, very much so. Not as much as Tom, um, but you've got to come the way around to this, and I think, what is it, four to one now from sevens? Yeah, for the turners, yeah, and you could bump into Bob Arnold, your galloping day shops. So. Yeah. Oh, it's in yours. Tom's lukewarm, if at best. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought it was lukewarm. That's freezing, I think. <laughs> well, stone cold is what you were saying. Uh, again, if we're looking at the, t the top ten bets of the, the week, I'd probably not for me at this, this stage. And not at that price. You can but, see on the screen fours at Lahon Press, fives at Hoy Senor, four Lahon Press, the turns at Hoy Senor for the festival. Not just again, chance. going back to Hoy Senor, winning and being placed or turned over in, in tiny field novice chases at a high level is going to be a very different examination to turning up in Cheltenham where they're going to go, there's going to be a different pace, rhythm, tempo, track. They're going to go 100 million miles an hour and there's going to be absolutely no hiding place in a much bigger field. That frightens me if you're going to invest. Yeah, it does. Right, charity bet time then. Every single week, Joel and myself will put up a charity bet to follow for the festival if you're trying to win some money for Jack Berry House. Uh, last week, uh, you went for Epitant. Uh, yeah. What are you going for this week? Uh, I'm going for Vauban this week. Um, I think if we're having a match bet, I think you'd probably go Pied Piper. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd go Vauban. So I'm mm. going Vauban, 100 quid, on the nose, at um, what price are we now? Nine to four okay. for the weekend, so nine to four. Last week I went for Champ in the stage. This week I am going for... <laughs> <laughs> there he is again. I went for Galvin in the Gold Cup. I don't see anything in the weekend that would have scared me. I think it's a bit of a match between Apolutar and him, and you're getting four to one. So, uh, Galvin, under quid on the nose, fingers crossed for raising money for Jack Berry House. Clearly, Joel doesn't think so. Right, gents, uh, one from you. I think I'm going to know where we're going. Best performance of the weekend from you, Tom. There's absolutely no question. Don't worry about Leopardstown. Loads of quality there, loads of excitement there, but Sandown, all the way. Long press A. Venetia Williams, Charlie Deutsch, he, to me, was just barnstorming. Love the way he goes about his job. I think there's still more to come. He's improving. He's super exciting. Four to one for the Turners. You like that? Yep. All the way. I think, obviously, bigger challenges lie ahead, but track, trip and ground hopefully will be all to suit. We don't know what the weather's going to be in five weeks' time, but he's shown quality on a variety of tracks, on a few, on a few uh, differences of ground, stable of flying, Nothing to fear, sky's the limit. Joel, best performance of the weekend, please. Uh, race four at Chartin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Zach Burton. Uh, no, I'm going to go at Fassal Vega. Um, oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, from, again, from the bumper. Mm. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when I said that uh, Holzer came second? Was it 
uh, Joya Machen, Joya, or whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever it was called. Yeah, uh, and, it, and you gave me the best, you know, you said, go for your best bet. And I said, it's in the bumper at Nace. And you were like, what? And all this brilliant racing's going on. Uh, that Fasel Vega at the weekend was unbelievable. I think it took, uh, it took the trainer by storm as well. Going like, yeah, he said he knew he was good, I, I but not didn't like think it. he was this good. Well, the Ted Wall said he's the best bumper horse he's ever seen. Yeah. And he's been around a while, hasn't he? Is the truth. Yes, indeed. So there we go. So, right. Uh, thanks for joining us then. This uh, weekend upcoming, we have got Super Saturday at Newbury. More festival clues to come. And at Warwick as well, we've got the Kingmaker, which will be a pointer towards the British chances uh, in the Arkle. Thanks to Tom for joining us. Thanks to Joel. We'll be back next week as well, reviewing that action. And we'll have some more uh, previews of some festival races as well. So hopefully you can join us next week on Betfred's Road to Cheltenham. Oh, <laughs>